Good morning, my cookie crumbs, and it's snowing. Who authorized this? I didn't authorize this. Who authorized the snow? Who said it could snow? Also, me crying in neuropathy and misdiagnosed arthro- <laughs> misdiagnosed uh, Raynaud's. Yeah, so it turns out I never had Raynaud's in my fingers. I have, <laughs> I have a type of neuropathy in my fingers. Ah, uh, the pain. My fingers hurt. Anyways, let's get into it. Hey, take it easy. Take your time waking up. Izuku groaned. A kind, soft voice spoke to him. It was gentle. Was he in heaven? Was that an angel? <laughs> I'm not an angel, but thank you. I take that as a compliment. Did he say that out loud? Yeah, you were kind of mumbling there for a second. Izuku came awake and saw a red-haired, red, ruby-eyed boy sitting above him. No, he was pillowed in his lap with a green and black checkered Hayori covering him like a blanket. It was nice and warm as it was pretty chilly wherever they were. Hey, easy, it's okay. Are you wounded? I couldn't spot any wounds anywhere, but... Are you wounded? No, not, not that I can think of. Okay, good. Good, good. I'm Kamado Tanjiro, by the way. What's your name? Midoriya. Izuku Midoriya. Nice to meet you, Midoriya. Anyways, how are you feeling? Kinda nauseous. I think whoever took me used some kind of a drug. I don't feel hurt or anything. Just really, really groggy. And nauseous. Ugh, me and sedatives don't really mix. Oh? Do sedatives hurt your belly or something? No, just make me nauseous. I see. Well, take your time. You don't have to get up. Are you sure? I'm not heavy or anything, am I? Nope, you're not heavy at all. And besides, I don't mind. I used to do this for my brothers and sisters all the time. Really? What's it like to have siblings? It was great. Don't you have siblings? No, I'm an only child. I see. And it was just me and my mom. My dad decided he didn't want me anymore. He left when I was young. I'm so sorry. A father should never abandon their child. No parent should abandon their child. But your mother, she stuck around. Yeah. She's the only one who cared about me when... Never mind. Different story for a different day. You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. It was me and my mom for a little while. Well, my mom and my siblings and I, of course. Oh, what about your dad? My dad had always been sickly when I was a kid. After my younger sibling, Ropta, was born, he passed away. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's okay. Like I said, he'd been sickly for the majority of my life, so I'm kind of glad he's not in pain anymore. Yeah, that's good. I think I'm ready to sit up now. All right, here, let me help. Ugh. Mm. Dizzy? Just a little. It's 
okay. Take a few deep breaths. You'll be fine. Izuku did just that. Huh? Hey, did you notice we're barefooted? And I don't remember wearing my hero costume. Hero costume? Well, to answer your question, yeah, I did notice we lacked footwear. But hero costume? Yeah, isn't that not what you're wearing? No, this is my Demon Slayer uniform. Demon Slayer? I guess we have a few things to explain to each other. I mean, after all, we did kind of spill our life stories. May as well spill everything else. Yeah, anyways, I did notice your clothing was a bit weird, but I thought maybe you were a fan of pre-quirk era? Pre-quirk era? Uh, yeah, it's the year 20XX. Wait, it's what? I'm in the future? The future? Where are you from? I'm from the Taisho period. What? You're from the 1920s? Basically. Well, it, it was 1920 when I first got here, at least. Or something like that. I don't know. I haven't kept track of the years, really. Dang. So, Demon Slayer? Yeah. Hero? Let me explain. Yeah, let me explain as well. But you go first. I'm pretty fascinated to hear about these heroes. I'm pretty curious about these demon slayers. Alright, I guess I will go first. Izuku went on to tell Tanjiro about heroes and villains and all about their society and how it's changed over the years. After that, Tanjiro explained what a demon slayer was, and that in his era, the pre-quirked era at least, there were not villains running around, but demons. Although Tanjiro did say you could call them villains, but to be real, they were monsters. But they're- they sound like villains. Yeah. Some of these demons were once human. They were made. Like villains. Villains are not born. They're made. Society looks at a person and decides that they're not worthy of society. So society looks down on them, beats them down, abuses them until there's nothing left of them. And then they go to the dark side and they're demonized or dehumanized even further. They become monsters. Unrecognizable. That's what I want to change about my time period. I don't want there to be any more villains. I want people to realize that some people are human too. All people start out as human. It doesn't matter if you have a power or not. Nobody deserves to be beaten down and abused just because you're different. Yeah, exactly. Anytime I've slayed a demon, I pray that they become reborn as a human and they can start over again. They can learn to love life. They can grow and prosper and make themselves better. Where they can find peace in the afterlife. Wherever they end up. Yeah. Sounds nice. Mm -hmm. So, breathing techniques, huh? Quirks? Yeah, so what do you want to know more about breathing techniques? I want to know everything. I wish I had my notebook, though. Notebook? 
Oh, sorry, I like to analyze quarks and stuff. That sounds interesting. I want to know more about quarks. Yours sounds really interesting. But judging by the scars on your arm, I'd say it's harmful at best, yeah. Hey, do you hear that? It sounds like humming. Yeah, it does sound like humming. Where do you think it's... The door opened, and the two got up and stood in a defensive position. No need for that, my dears. No need for that at all. You are guests here, and you will be treated as such if you behave. Who are you? Yes, and what do you want with us? I want your powers. Let me guess, some villain that's about to monologue and tell us why he wants our powers? And let me guess, world domination, somebody wronged you in the past, blah blah blah. Ah, oh, don't be rude. Well, I was going to monologue and tell you, but I guess that's ruined. Also, quit breaking the fourth wall. Whoops. Well, hey, I'm sure the audience doesn't want to hear you monologuing. Pretty sure they get tired of it. Uh, the audience doesn't need to know. Or, well, they do need to know, but... Uh, you get what I mean. Just get to the point. For real. Get to the point, dude. Fine. Fine, fine. The point... I don't want world domination, and I have been wronged, but not to the point where I want to steal your power. No, no. I have different plans for your powers. Let me guess. Or let me take a wild guess, Isuku said. Weapons? Ding, ding, ding! We have a winner! Wow, you are smart! Fabulous! Fabulous, darling. Kind of sound like a Disney villain. Ah, Disney villains were the greatest villains of all time. <clears throat> I dare you to say otherwise. Uh, oh, stow it. What's a Disney villain? Tanjiro whispered. I'll explain a little later. Tanjiro just nodded. This was getting weird. Also, they question what was the fourth wall and how did they break it? Anyways, they turned their attention back to the villain. Who was, of course, monologuing. They decided not to pay attention and sat back down on the ground. And according to anime logic, they pulled out cups of tea out of thin air and started sipping are you even listening <sighs> nope you got kind of boring this tea is really delicious for having come out of thin air mm -hmm. uh. fine then the villain snapped his fingers and Izuku tumbled to the ground, his eyes wide in fear, his mouth open in a silent scream. He curled up into a ball. Stop it! What are you doing to him? Oh, causing him a fair bit of pain. This is punishment. Well, stop it! Stop it! Izuku! Izuku! Fine. Since you're now a little more complacent. He snapped his fingers again, and Izuku passed out. The pain had been too much, so his body just shut down. Izuku? No! Hey, come on! Open your eyes! Izuku, wake up and talk to me! 
Are you okay? You monster. Monster? I am no monster. I've seen demons with more humanity than you. Well, that was hurtful. Do I need to give you the same punishment? No. I think taking care of him will be punishment enough. He's practically useless anyways. Anyways, I'll be by later with some food and water for you. Behave yourselves, and you'll get a treat. Ta-ta for now. And let his pain be a reminder of what I'm capable of. And what'll happen if you don't behave yourselves. The door slammed shut and locked. That humming sound was back. Tanjiro didn't notice it up before because he was paying too much attention to Izuku. He, before he tended to Izuku, he wanted to try something. Without his sword, he wasn't sure if he could do it, but... He tried to summon one of his water-breathing techniques, and he couldn't. Oh no. He felt a familiar tugging. Like his power was still there and trying to get to the surface, but it wasn't releasing. He, this room, it might be blocking my power somehow. I can't focus on that right now. Izuku needs me more. Tanjiro got comfortable and placed Izuku's head back in his lap as he did before. He then covered him with his Hayori to keep him warm. It was pretty cold in here, but nothing that Tanjiro wasn't used to. He grew up in the mountains, where it got really cold really quickly, and it snowed the majority of the year. He was used to the cold. He could go out and nothing but his undergarments and still be completely fine. Not that he would do that anyways. Even though he was used to the cold, it was dangerous to do that. He carted a gentle hand through Izuku's hair, hoping he'd wake up soon. I'm sorry, Izuku. I couldn't protect you. I'll do better next time. He then thought back to his family, the Hashira, Nezuko, his sister, and his two adopted brothers, Inosuke and Zenitsu. Oh guys, please look after each other. I'll be home soon, hopefully. Stay safe. All of you. He couldn't cry. Not now. But he felt the stinging of tears in his eyes. He felt like a failure. But he needed to set his feelings aside for now. He could worry about this later. This boy needed his attention more. And so, Tandro settled in for what, could have, for what could be a very long day or evening. Suddenly the lights dimmed, and Izuku figured it must be nighttime now. Maybe this room will stimulate night and day. There was no clocks on the wall, and there was no sun either. There was no real way to tell the time. But if these lights were anything to go by, they could use these. 
Tanjiro wasn't tired, not in the least. So he stayed up to be a silent guardian to this boy. I'll keep you safe, I promise, he whispered. It was going to be a very, very long night. Oh, Jesus. So they're barefooted, huh? Hmm. Wonder why that could be. So they haven't noticed it yet. But they will. They will. They were too busy. <laughs> also, yeah, I had to put in some comedic relief. Just to break up the angst a little. Because it's about to go from bad to worse to possibly worse to possibly even more worse it's about to be like the fox and the hound if you read the book the fox and the hound you know it goes from bad to worse it goes from like zero to 60 in no time <laughs> if you haven't read the book highly recommend if you've just watched the movie even the disney movie goes from bad to worst or goes from zero to 60 in no time flat but the book is really really good but dang, it just goes from bad to worse to worse to even more worse to worse than that if if worse was even possible after the first two. But yeah, that's all I got for you guys. I had to redo this episode actually three times because I really just wasn't happy with it. I'm still kind of not happy with it, but I'm not going to redo it. I think it's good enough for now <laughs> all right guys i will see you later bye bye